I usually do a what's new from RMS update every month or so, but to be really honest, I have not been looking at RMS as much as I used to, which doesn't mean that those videos are going anywhere, but I wanted to try something different today because if you saw my last vlog, you may remember that I have been on the hunt for a new summer bag, which means that I have been browsing some of our favorite brands sites. I have been spending a lot of time on the Rose website. I have also been looking at brands like Laura Piana and even Goyard. And I came across some really exciting new launches that I cannot wait to put on your radar and also hear your thoughts on. I would love for you to participate in today's video Video and let me know your thoughts on some of these new launches because I think there are some really fun, exciting new pieces here, which I honestly cannot wait to hear what you have to say about. But without further ado, if you'd like to hear my mini review and first impressions on what's new in luxury fashion, then make sure to give this video a thumbs up, subscribe down below if you haven't done so yet, and keep on watching. Let me scoot over just so I can put my screen up on the screen here so you can see everything that I see. But let me start screen record really quick. Three, two, one, here we go. So let's start with the row. And to my surprise, the row has just launched a new range of Raffia bags, which is definitely something that I could have seen myself getting into but to be really honest i don't really think that these shapes would suit me but they have two bags in this new raffia range one of them is the emily bag and then the other one is the oregon bag i think they are quite reasonably priced so the emily bag is a little bit more petite it has more of a bucket or more of a basket shape to it which i think is really beautiful i think to me or at least for me with my proportions, it would be a little bit too small. And I don't like that the handles are a little bit shorter as well, which means that I would probably struggle to put it over my shoulder. It is $920, which I think, I mean, it's not inexpensive by any means, but for a handwoven tote from the row, I mean, what else would we expect? It comes in two different colors. Both bags actually come in two different colors in black and in a natural finish. They are made of handwoven raffia. And let's look at some of the pictures. So the Emily does have a little bit of a pattern to it. It looks really kind of rough and raw looking, which some of you will appreciate. Other people will not. I like it. Do I think that you need to go to the road to get this specific look? I don't think so, but if you're a fan of the brand, it's something that I think you will really appreciate. And then moving on to the larger of the two, which is the Oregon Tote. It's also made of raffia. I assume it's also hand woven. And it says that the black one is an in-store exclusive. I don't think that's the case because I have seen this pop up on other sites. And then let's look at the natural color. The natural color is still available on the website. And I'll try to make sure to link everything down below for you. So if you see something in this video that you would like to do a little bit of research on yourself, you can just go through the links in the info box. This bag, similar to the Emily Tote, has more of a rougher, unfinished, more organic look to it. Again, is it going to be really unique to the role? I don't think so, but if you're a fan of the brand, I think it's something that you will really appreciate. Personally, if I had to choose one out of the two, this is the one I would go for. Obviously in black, the natural color, I really don't like this particular shade of natural to me. It is a little bit more rough. And then the BAM bag, the BAN, it might look similar at first glance, but it is actually made of leather. It's kind of a more sort of granola take on the woven Bottega totes. I much prefer Bottega's technique of how they sort of weave their pieces of leather together. And for $5,100, to me, this looks a little bit too granola and too farmer's market. And then the Estelle might be something else that you would consider for the summer. I really don't like this particular pattern for a tote bag like this. It looks a lot rougher and a lot more chunky, a lot less refined in my opinion but it is smaller and the handles are longer. So if you're looking for a more ladylike structure, this might be something that you want to look into too. It only comes in one color, which it's not black. It's more of a natural sort of chocolate brown. It's an interesting shape, but again, it's not the most luxurious looking in my opinion. But this picture actually brings us to the next new launch from the road that I wanted to share with you my thoughts on, which is the, I think they are called the Hugo 
slippers or the Hugo slip-ons, which are basically, they're kind of, they're giving me a little bit of a Birkenstock vibe. And in theory, it's something that I should very much dislike. I mean, I do have a pair of Birkenstocks. I actually have a pair of fake Birkenstocks from Zara Home that I wear at home in the summer when I go out to my balcony quite a lot. I really enjoy those, but I don't know if I would want to wear them out, but there is something about these shoes that I really quite like. It's something that is offered both for men and women. I think for women, they are doing it in felt. They're doing it in suede, as you can see it in this picture. And then I think it also comes in pony hair in a handful of neutral shades. I've seen it in this sort of taupey color. I've seen it in black and also in gray felt. I, again, I don't know, but there's something that I really enjoy about these, which is surprising because when it comes to other sort of grandpa sandals like the Sheep or the Chanel grandpa sandals, I'm very much against those. But what I appreciate about these is that they are not trying to be anything that they are not. I really quite like the way these look. Let me see if they are available online still because I wouldn't be surprised if they were sold out. They were, they would probably be, would it be a sandal? No, I guess they're not a sandal, so maybe they are a pair of flats. Let's see. They are called the Hugo. Of course, the soft loafers are still available in IA for this current season. And then here are the Hugo slides. So as I mentioned, they come in suede, they come in pony hair, and then Oh, here is the felt version. It also comes in a mix of wool and cashmere. I would not suggest picking them up in wool because I I have had some sort of felt, not sort of, but actual shoes that were made of felt and they really do not last, especially if you have a pet, their hair will get stuck to it and you cannot get rid of it. So I would either opt for the pony hair version, but my personal favorite is the suede version. And as I mentioned, it's something that is offered both for men and women. So I don't know if it would be hypocritical for me to say that I love these when I dislike the sheep and the Chanel that sandals so much, but I really do like these. I don't know if I would be able to pull them off. I feel like if I bought these, I would probably not wear them out and it's a little bit too expensive to strictly wear around the house, but it might be something that I see in my future. And then another pair of shoes that I think is new for this season are the carry loafers. Again, these are something that are offered both for men and women in a few different finishes. They come in leather, in pony hair, and I think that might be it. I think they also do these in suede for men. They are, depending on which finish you pick them up in, they are just over $1,000. And then in pony hair, they are slightly more expensive. What I really like about these is that if you're looking for a pair of slip-on shoes for the summer, but you don't want a pair of ballerina slippers, or if you don't want to go for espadrilles or sandals, these are a really elegant, really effortless and chic way to finish an outfit. I really do like these. I think the sole is really flat. It doesn't even seem like that they have any heel to them, which might not be the most comfortable if you live in the city, but I think this is such an elegant, refined and effortless look. I love the black version and then the white version, which is kind of like an off-white ivory color is also really elegant. The toe seems quite round. So that is something that you have to keep in mind. But if you're looking for a pair of shoes for the summer, this I would highly suggest looking into. I want to show you the men's version because they are doing quite a few things for men. So they are doing the Hugo slides for men as well, only in suede, which makes me quite happy. And then here are the carry loafers, which for men they do in ostrich, suede, and leather. And then they, they are still doing the canal slip-ons, which I have tried and they are insanely uncomfortable because the sole like the sole of these shoes is so thin that you can literally feel everything that you step on. So I wasn't a big fan of those, but these carry loafers I really like because I feel like they are somewhere between an espadrille, a pair of driving shoes and a penny loafer. I feel like it borrows the best of each one of those styles. So I am a big fan of these. I don't know why they only do ostrich in dark green. It's such a particular shade to go for. I wouldn't go for the ostrich version, but black suede or getting these in black leather, I think you would really appreciate having in your collection. These are the kind of shoes that I think you would get a ton of wear out of. And let me know your thoughts on the Hugo slides. 
it is something that I might have to add onto my spring summer wish list. And I can't believe I almost forgot to tell you about these, but they are now doing the park totes in a small size. I'm not sure how new these are. I don't think I've ever seen people carrying these out. So the park tote comes in a ton of different sizes from extra large all the way to small. They offer these both for men and women, and there are two different structures. There is the North South version, which is more, I always get confused, vertically elongated. And then you have the original park tote, which is a little bit more horizontally wide. And now they're doing these in a small size, which I think is so incredibly adorable. If you like a really small bucket bag, but you're looking for something that is just a little bit more elegant and sophisticated, these would be such an amazing bag to have in your collection if you don't need that much with you on a daily basis, but you still want to have a bag that can fit quite a bit. I think these would be such an amazing piece to have in your collection. They're really reasonably priced. I have never played around with the small park tote, but I have looked at the larger version and they're made of the softest, most buttery grain skins. And I think, it would be the same for these smaller sizes too. I'm really a big fan of these. If I had to choose, I would probably go for the original Park Tote over the North-South version, but I really don't think you can go wrong with either one. So if you've been on the hunt for a smaller bag, this is really quite stunning. And speaking of small bags, the 90s bag is back in stock, which I don't think is going to last. They are doing it in leather, in... I think this is kind of a take on suede and I think this is it, but it is also an incredible, really simple staple bag to have in your collection. It is one of the rose most popular bags because it is quite reasonably priced and it is universally flattering. You will never look out of place with this bag, whether you want to dress it up or dress it down. This bag just really goes with anything and everything. But if you're looking for something that fits a little bit more, something that you can perhaps take to the gym in the summer because it will fit a water bottle, a towel, and just your daily essentials, the small park totes, I would definitely love to put on your feed. How could I do a video on luxury summer bags without mentioning Loewe? So let's see what's new from Loewe. They have been doing this small raffia tote, which obviously, I feel like Loewe was the brand who has put these sort of basket bags back on the luxury map. I don't think that they were the first brand who started doing them, but I think they are the one who needs to be credited for bringing these back into the world of luxury fashion. They have been playing around with raffia bags. They have a ton of them at this point. This is one of the newest take on the raffia bag, but I think this isn't the first season that they're doing them. I feel like it was part of their Ibiza collaboration that they did last year or maybe even the year before, but I think they will continue doing them in different colors with the large Loewe emblem on it. I really don't like it, but if you do, it's coming in some new colors. I have actually seen this scarf dress in silk on a mannequin before, and it is just divine. If you're looking for a new, really elegant, incredibly chic summer dress, the cut of this is just spectacular. I have owned a handful of pieces of ready-to-wear from Loewe, and I was always underwhelmed by the quality, but I feel like it has been getting better and better. When it comes to their bags, they are doing a new take on the flamenco bag, which comes with this sort of thicker kind of donut chain, at least that's what it reminds me of. These chain links kind of remind me of a donut, which they have a new flamenco take on. I love the flamenco bag. It comes in tiny itty bitty sizes all the way to tote bags. But I think the most popular is the clutch bag size, which they are doing now in a slightly rounded version with this thicker donut chain, which is really, really special. You know, I feel like it's quite hard to do a new luxurious take on chains. I feel like Chanel has pretty much monopoly on doing luxurious chains, but I think Loewe did an incredible job with this. Of course, they have the puzzle bag, which they do every single season in different takes. I really do like that bag. I don't own the, the Loewe puzzle. I have looked at it before in the largest size, but I really don't think that it would fill a gap in my collection, but I think it's a great everyday bag. They have the squeeze bag in cord, which is almost 9,000. 
thousand dollars that is insane but it is a pretty cool bag the squeeze bag isn't my favorite bag from loewe but it's nice it's pretty interesting i definitely want to try this t-shirt on they are doing this t-shirt in a really soft buttery smooth leather which i think it's pass at loewe and it also has kind of a raw edge to it it almost looks kind of burned which I really, really do like. Now, obviously it is quite expensive for a t-shirt, but personally, I would not wear this as a t-shirt. I would wear this almost as a jacket. I think it would be an incredible piece to layer over a shirt or even over a long sleeve t-shirt. So this is something that I want to go and try. I have to see if my local Loewe is going to get this in stock. I'm not sure because they never really get any of the more special pieces, but this, I love the look of. So maybe if I go traveling or on my, during my next trip, if I see a larger Loewe boutique, I have to stop by to try this on. I don't think I would order it for $5,000 blindly. I mean, I guess I can always return it, but I hate dealing with returns. When I get something in, I don't want to return it, but this is something that I'm tempted by. Although Loewe always does pretty good sales. I think they do like a 50% discount at the end of each season. So maybe I should wait and see if this goes on sale because I don't think it's going to be a classic piece. And I don't think too many people out there would feel comfortable spending almost $5,000 on a leather t-shirt. I think it's kind of an acquired taste, but it is something that I feel would be quite a special addition to my collection. But the reason we are here is to discuss the mini Pebble bucket bag, which is one of the newest launches from Loewe. And I am obsessed with this bag. It comes in, I think, three different sizes. I think it comes in a mini, a medium, and a large. The mini version comes with a removable shoulder strap. And what's special about these bags is that they are really simple bucket style tote that come with a single but thicker, wider handle. It kind of reminds me of the Picatin but a picketing that is a little bit more fun and slightly less, well, actually a lot less overdone. It features this large pebble-shaped Loewe emblem, which is actually quite subtle. I feel like if you don't know Loewe, you wouldn't really pick up on their emblem on it because it's just carved into the metal. It's not actually done in color, but it's quite similar to the picketing, not only in terms of the shape, but also considering that this bag doesn't come with a proper lining either, but at least this one does feature a pocket on the inside. So if you like the look of the Picatin, but you feel like it's slightly overdone or you're looking for something that is just a little bit more fun and playful and a bag that also comes with a shoulder strap, this I think would be a really interesting bag to put on your radar and I do think it's quite reasonably priced for $2,400. There are two reasons I went on to the Goyard site in the first place. Number one, they do come out with a range of limited edition summer bags. I feel like almost every summer it's something that they have been doing for the past few years at least. So I wanted to see what they're offering for this current summer season because I had a specific bag in mind. And then number two, I have been working on a truth about Goyard dedicated brand deep dive. If you were not aware, I do this series where I do a dedicated deep dive on some really popular luxury houses out there. We talk about their heritage, their most iconic pieces, and I also share my thoughts on what pieces I think are worth your hard-earned money. So the Goyard Deep Dive is coming really, really soon. If there are any other brands that you'd like me to look at next, let me know in the comment section. These videos take me ages to research and then film because I always try to go to the brand's dedicated flagships or their stores, talk to as many people as I possibly can. But with Goyard, it's quite difficult because they are very much against filming. So it has been quite tough, but you know, I do have my thoughts on Goyard. Anyway, the reason I wanted to look at Goyard is because they have this one bag, which it's called the Allegra bag. I'm pretty sure I'm pronouncing it wrong. If I remember correctly, it's inspired by a farmer's market in Paris. Yes, the Allegra bag is a nod to the famous and picturesque Allegra farmer's market located in the 12th district in Paris. I've never been there, but I knew the story behind this bag. I think it's something that has been around for a few years. It used to be available in very, very limited numbers, but I think they have been 
offering it more regularly, but it is a summer piece and it's usually only available in a single colorway. For this current season, they're doing it in coral, which is not my personal cup of tea, but I do love this bag. Of course, it borrows inspiration from those sort of farmer's basket knitted bags, but it's done in a really elegant and sophisticated way. I love the shape. I love the wooden rod. I even like the fact that they included the Goyard monogram canvas, which is a really, really hard wearing canvas. We'll talk all about it in my dedicated brand deep dive, but it is one of my favorite monogram canvases but I'm usually not the biggest fan of a bag that's completely made up of this canvas because it can be quite overwhelming. And with how popular some of their bigger totes are, I think it can seem quite overdone, but I think it is the perfect balance of the hand woven. I don't think it's raffia, what is it made of? Yeah, it is, it's a hand braided raffia mesh. So I guess I was right, it's made of raffia, but I think it's the perfect balance of the natural organic material paired with this more sophisticated, not only leather, but also their really heavy duty canvas. And it is incredibly heavy duty. I do think that it is one of the most hard wearing canvases. Of course, Louis Vuitton has their own take on this. Even Moina has their coated canvas, but I actually think that Goyard's is the very best. And I'll show you proof of that in my brand deep dive. Anyway, coming back to this bag, it's not something that I'm going to be able to buy because you have to go to a Goyard store to be able to pick this up. And I'm not even sure if every single Goyard boutique carries this or it's only Goyard boutiques that are on more sort of beachy destinations. So the Goyard, I think there's one in Monaco. So I could ask a friend to pick it up for me, but I would love to try it. And if it's only available in Coral this season, it's really not my cup of tea, but I want it to put this on your radar because it is a spectacular bag and you can find these pop up on the pre-loved market. It's quite rare because there aren't a lot of these bags floating around out there and you never know what color you'll find this in because they don't offer these in a consistent color range. But speaking of limited edition pieces, they're also doing the Anjou PM tote with an embroidered finish. I really do not like, well, so, Goyard does two different totes, which we'll discuss in my deep dive. They do the Saint Louis and the Anjou tote. The Anjou, I think the difference is, is that the Anjou on one side is made of leather and on the inside, it's made of the Goyard canvas. It's reversible. And then the Saint Louis is canvas on one side and it's, well, it's plain canvas on one side and it's the Goyard printed canvas on the other. And it's interesting because the Saint Louis was actually, it was originally meant to be used as a reversible beach bag. And because Goyard's canvas is so hard wearing, it was the perfect piece to take to the beach. So I guess it's great that now they have a dedicated beach range. So the Anjou they're offering with an embroidered finish. I really am not a fan of the seahorses and this coral color again is not my cup of tea, but you might like it. So I thought I would mention it here. And then the Saint Louis they are doing in the GM size, which is one of the bigger sizes. And it comes with a limited edition beach towel, which I do think is really quite chic. I personally never saw the point of spending a lot of money on a beach towel because I'm not a beachy person. I don't enjoy going to the beach. And if I do, I usually try to stay at a resort that will provide towels. I just don't really see the point of spending a lot of money on towels. But if you are big on boating, if you go to the beach often, maybe if you are a member at a beach club and you like taking your own beach towels, I can see the point. And this would be really quite special. The Saint Louis for this current season, they're doing in turquoise. And if you look at the front of the bag, you can see that it is slightly different from a regular Saint Louis because it does have an additional little emblem on the front, which I really do love this color. So I'm not against it. And if you're looking for a new tote bag and you can find this because I assume it would be quite hard to find, this is out now. Now, in terms of pricing the Saint Louis, how much are the Saint Louis totes? They are not that expensive. I think this would be a little bit more expensive, but I think they are usually, they start at around $2,000 and then they go up in price as they go up in size. And then when it comes to the Allegra tote, I have no idea. If you have any insight, on how much the Allegra tote is, please let us know in the comment section. My educated guess is that they're probably around $3,500. That would be my guess. 
But let's see what else is new at Goyard. So they are doing a back mirror in 11 different shades. So I guess it comes in the full Goyard range. And I'm so glad I am on this page because I wanted to tell you about these. So now Goyard is also doing a key pouch slash keychain. So it's similar to the one that I bought from Louis Vuitton a couple of years ago, and I am very late to the game. It's nothing new, but Louis Vuitton has been doing this little key pouch for years, and it is by far one of my most used luxury pieces. I love the fact that you can put your keys onto it, but it also comes with a little credit card holder. Well, I think the idea is that you would actually tuck your keys in that pouch so they wouldn't scratch the lining of your bag, but I use that little pouch as a card holder. I always Always put my dry cleaning tickets in there so I'm never without them and it's also a great way to have your store loyalty cards that you don't want to be without you can also talk a little bit of cash in there if you use public transport you can also put those cards in there things that you never want to be without because it's quite unlikely that you'll leave your home without your keys but Goyard is also doing it now it's part of their pouch range because obviously if Goyard is known for anything. They are known for their carrier pouches, which come in a ton of different colors and sizes. And now they're also doing a little key pouch slash keychain. It's available in the entire color chart from Goyard, which is interesting because back in the day when I first started looking at Goyard, I was never the biggest Goyard fan, but back in the day, each color was a different price. Okay, that's not 100% true. Black and brown was slightly less expensive than the colors because colors were more expensive. So I guess there were only two price ranges, color and non-color, which to me was perfect because I was only ever interested in black. But I think it started last year maybe that they made the pricing consistent. So now it doesn't matter which color you go for, it will be the exact same price, which I guess just means that they increase the prices of the black and brown pieces. I doubt that they would decrease the price of anything. But um, this is a really cute key pouch. I actually looked at this before. I asked for the price and I think it was $530, something along those lines, just over $500, which is a lot more than the Louis Vuitton key pouch. But if you're a big Goyard fan and you already have a Goyard collection or if you have someone in your life who loves Goyard, these are things that you will definitely get your money's worth out. And last but not least, let's see what's new from Laura Piana for spring summer. If you're not familiar with Laura Piana or you'd like to get a little bit more insight into the brand, I have two videos on Laura Piana. I have a brand deep dive. So if you want to get a better idea and a better understanding for what Laura Piana is all about, you can definitely check that out. And then I also have another video which is dedicated to Laura Piana's bags because I do think that Laura Piana's bags are some of the most underrated, underappreciated luxury bags out there. The quality, the designs, the craftsmanship, the value that they will add to your collection is just outstanding and they're quite reasonably priced for what you get. Now, obviously, Laura Piana had quite a bit of controversy surrounding them when it was discovered that they were underpaying the people who they were sourcing Vicuña from in Peru, which it's quite a complex issue, which I do want to do a dedicated video on. So we're not going to look, we're not going to be looking at ready to wear because I don't want to recommend ready to wear before we discuss that, but I did want to look at their bags, but it's just something for you to keep in mind. If you would like to know you know, who you're spending your money with and what brand you are supporting, I would definitely suggest looking at the controversies surrounding their Vicuña pieces, but it is quite a complex issue. It's not only about underpaying the people who help get Laura Piana get their hands on Vicuña, but it's also about the how Peru controls the amount of Vicuña that can leave the country. And because Laura Piana has a large purchasing power, it means that not a lot of Vicuña can go to the local artisans and the local craftspeople who would like to create Vicuña pieces themselves because there are Vicuña animals. I think they are no longer endangered, which is largely because of Laura Piana. Laura Piana has invested a lot of money into saving Vicuña as a species. So again, you see it's quite a complex issue. But anyway, long story short, because Vicuña animals are not around in abundance, they cannot be domesticated like other animals, they have to roam the wild. And because they are wild animals, you cannot control the amount of 
fur that you can get from a vicuña animal and they cannot be sheared every single season. It takes quite a long time for them to regrow their fur. So because of that, in order to be ethical, the Peruvian government determines how much fur can be used each and every single season. So there is a part of the population that remains undisturbed. And because Lower Piana has so much power, because they have obviously the money, the majority of fur goes to them instead of the fur going to local artisans who would like to obviously use the cunha themselves on their products. So Anyway, it is quite a complex issue, which I would definitely love to touch on, but I think I need to do a little bit more research on that. So anyway, I just wanted to bring your attention to this in case you like to be aware of what you're spending your money on. I think it's incredibly important, but today we're going to be looking at their bags. If you would like to find out more about Laura Piana's bags, I do not want to subscribe to your newsletter, Laura Piana. I appreciate you, but no, thank you. Okay, let's look at their bags. So they do have the Blossom Tote. Laura Piana does actually have quite a large range of tote bags and you might be wondering, okay, gee, you're looking for a summer bag. Why are you not looking at Laura Piana? I really do not like their tote bags. I think they are quite underwhelming in terms of design and I really don't think that they suit my style. Now this Blossom bag, I have not actually seen in this linen slash silk finish before. It's definitely a little bit more interesting, but I do think it is just way too bohemian for my liking so i am really not a big fan of their totes but they have recently redesigned the larger extra pocket the extra pocket i'm sure is a bag that you're familiar with if you're not you have to go and check out my lower piano bag deep dive because we talk all about the extra pockets it used to be available in three different sizes now it's available in two you have the smaller extra pocket which comes with a removable shoulder strap and then you have the extra bag which is in size 27 27 refers to the length of the bag which was redesigned last season i actually got a preview of this bag before it even launched and it is really a beautiful bag i still prefer the original removable strap but i do understand why laura piana decided to redesign it because this new strap feels a lot more sophisticated and a lot more refined. It's kind of comparable to the strap that you'll find on the Constance bag in that it's not it's not adjustable was the best way of putting it. You can play around with the strap because you can either double it and carry it as a shoulder bag. You can pull the strap out and use it as a crossbody bag but the strap is really quite short. So on me, it looked really awkward when I wore it crossbody. So you do have to be a little bit more petite or more narrow shouldered to be able to put this bag crossbody comfortably. And then you can also carry this bag by the top handle, which if you pull the strap out, the, you will always have, as you can see here in the picture, this is not manipulated. This is genuinely what the bag will look like because the middle part of the strap is a little bit thicker. So it will never lay flat against the top part of the bag like it would on the constants because of the purposeful shaping of the strap. So you will always have that handle looking little detail but it comes in a ton of different colors and if you're looking for a really elegant everyday bag but a bag that fits a ton these are an incredible bag to look at i much prefer the new charm on the extra bag compared to the extra pocket because the extra pocket can feel a little bit childish a little bit too much like a vanity case because of the shape of the zip pull but I really like the fact that the zipper on the extra bag is made of leather and then you just have this little charm on it, which I got a few questions on whether I think that this bag would be a pain to use or not. I have never owned these bags. I have played around with them on several occasions and I don't think that they would be any more difficult to use. In fact, I think they might be a little bit easier to use than something like a Kelly bag or even a Constance would be because you just have a zipper, which I know is not going to be everyone's cup of tea, but personally, I do love these bags. They offer them in a ton of different finishes, colors, leathers. They come in smooth calfskin. They do them in exotic leathers they are doing these bags in even cashmere so you have a lot to choose from and i am a big fan and then another new bag from laura piana is the gear bag they are also coming out with a tote which i think is going to be exquisite if you like things along the lines of the birkin 
whenever that bag launches, I will do a video on it. And I'm not going to be comparing it to the Birkin because I think it is getting a little bit tired to compare every single new top handle back to the Birkin. The reason I am saying it this way is because most of you know me for my content on RMS. So I'm not going to call that bag the new Birkin, but uh, if you like the user experience of the Birkin or if you like a bag that has two structured top handles and more of an open style tote shape, that is something that I will have to introduce you to. Anyway, the new small Kiera bag, I'm not a fan of, I don't really like the overall shape and I don't like how the opening is this round little emblem, which is quite Laura Piana, but to me, this bag just feels kind of old. I think, you know, it's just really traditional and orthodox. I don't think there's anything groundbreaking about it, but if you're looking for a simple crossbody bag and you like a more mature looking bag, I'm sure it's going to be exquisitely made. The bail bag, on the other hand, I am a huge fan of, but I talk all about that bag, all the different sizes, the colors, the finishes that it comes in, in my bag deep dive. The gear also comes in a mini size. And I think this might be it. Well, other than the extra pockets. So what's the extra pockets finish du jour? So they are doing it in kind of a boucle finish. So it's made of wool, linen, and cotton, and it has kind of like a, like um, yeah, it's kind of like a boucle finish, and the strap on this is actually a chain, which is kind of, doesn't it remind you of the Shandong chain? Interesting. I like it. I mean, this is definitely for the Laura Piana collector because what I love about the extra pocket is how easily you can dress it up or dress it down, which means that it will never look out of place. You can wear it with a pair of jeans and a tank top, but you can dress it up and wear it to a more formal occasion. But when it comes to a bag in such a light color and in a boucle finish, this is a recipe for disaster when it comes to color transfer. And I mean, I'm sitting in a boucle chair and I can tell you that these chairs will really not last. You will leave marks and prints and fluff behind no matter how careful you are. But if you're a collector, this is definitely a really special finish. But personally, if you would like to add some really unique finishes and textures into your outfit, I would suggest exploring the extra pocket and the extra bag range in exotic skins. But I think this is everything that we had for today. I'm trying to think there was something else that I was going to share with you from Laura Piana. Oh yeah, they are doing an extra, I think it's called the extra pouch for men. Let me see if it's online. So the obviously the extra pocket is the smaller size. It measures 19 centimeters. You have the extra bag, which measures, measures 27 centimeters. And then they're doing a new take on it for men, which is a little bit more flat. It's kind of like similar to the shape of a Kelly Dons, not Kelly Dons, Kelly Depeche. I'm sorry, I'm confusing myself here. It's not on the website, but let me see if I can find it here. Okay, so there is the extra leather pouch. It's called, it is by Laura Piana and it comes in leather. Is this the black version? No, they're doing it in brown. So it comes in three different colors that I've seen it in. It comes in a really, really dark, rich brown, which is almost black. It comes in actual black and it also comes in black ostrich. And what's special about this is number one, the shape. So it's not quite as so it's not as tapered as the extra pocket. It's a lot more flat. And instead of it featuring a removable shoulder strap, you have this tiny little handle, which is the same for the Kelly Depeche and a lot of men's bags. I don't really get it. I feel like if you got this bag, you should just remove the that weird little handle. It makes it look so strange and... I don't know, it just reminds me of those lanyards that some people have on their keys, which to me just makes it seem like you're a janitor and you have so many keeps to keep track of. I really don't think it's refined in any shape or form. So I would personally just really gently got, get rid of that lanyard looking little handle and I would just grab it by the body of the bag or by holding on to the handle. But I think it is a really special bag. And of course, it's not exclusive to men. If you are looking for an extra pocket that is a little bit more, 
sort of simple and streamlined. This is a great bag to look into. And I like the fact that the hardware is tone on tone. So again, it comes in dark brown. It comes in black, both in ostrich and regular leather. And I think it is a really cool bag. So perhaps if you have someone in your life, whether you're looking for a new bag for yourself or for someone else, and if you have someone in your life who loves bags, but they find bags a little bit intimidating because of the shapes or the sizes. This I think would be a great introduction to the world of bags. I think there is a ton that you can do with this bag and it wouldn't break the bank either. So I will try to make sure to link it down below for you because I have a suspicion it's going to be a hard piece to find. It is the first time that Laura Piano is doing something like this for men because previously they did not even have a selection of bags for men. So they are just starting out with these creations. So if you like the look of it, I would probably jump on this sooner rather than later. And my friends, this brings us to the end of today's video discussing the latest and greatest in luxury fashion. I really hope you enjoyed this really chatty, really laid back sort of browse session together. If you'd like me to do more videos like this, make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't done so yet. And I cannot wait to hear your thoughts in the comment section on these pieces. And if there are any other brands that you would like to browse with me, make sure to leave those in the comment section and we can definitely do it together next time. But I really appreciate you being here and watching and I cannot wait to see you back here with a new video really, really soon.